ಸಿಂಧಿ ಕಗವಲ್ಲಿ December the 26th, 2004. On this day, many Asian countries were ravaged by a tsunami. This was a catastrophe that killed more than 200,000 people and destroyed whole coastal regions. Other coastal areas have a natural shield in the form of mangrove forests. These areas were considerably less affected by the tsunami as the mangroves dense root systems reduced the tsunami's force. The word mangrove is a collective term for several species of trees and shrubs belonging to different families. What they have in common is a joint biosphere the coast and estuaries of the tropics and subtropics. They have adapted to salt water and extreme tides. Some 70 species are to be found, of which some can grow to a height of 30 meters. Their function as a coastal barrier is only one of their many contributions to nature's equilibrium. Terrestrial and marine organisms which share the same ecological roots cannot be found other than in the mangrove swamps of the tropical and subtropical coasts in such abundance. Their branches are home to numerous birds. In between their characteristic dense roots is a habitat for a vast amount of mussels, snails, crabs, prawns, sponges, barnacles and oysters. These areas are also used by many fish as nursery grounds. The thickets of the mangrove's root system provide shelter for young fish. Thus, as we can see, the mangroves are very important for the economies of coastal and sea fisheries. Where mangrove forests were destroyed in the past, it had a dramatic effect on the local fishing economy. Through their carbon dioxide absorbing characteristics, mangroves help in the protection of the climate. According to calculations made by scientists of the University of Malaysia, one and a half tons of CO2 are absorbed each year by one hectare of mangrove forest. This is roughly equivalent to the yearly emissions of a car. Furthermore, Mangrove forests protect the productive hinterland by preventing flooding and oversalinity. This is because mankind prefers to use the coastal regions as its own biosphere. Where once mangroves grew, we now find plantation settlements, tourist centers and harbors. Mangrove wood is also used by coastal dwellers as firewood or to produce charcoal and tannin. Free grazing cattle also cause great damage in that a strip in particular the younger plants shoots. Shrimp farms often sponsored by the government or the World Bank decimate the numbers of mangroves. Once praised as a blue revolution, these aquacultures produce shrimps mainly for export, their basins destroying wide coastal forest areas. Breeding basins, each the size of a football field, can only be used for three to ten years at the most. After this, the amount of chemicals, including antibiotics and pesticides, in the basins is so high that it becomes necessary to abandon them and to build new breeding pools for the sensitive shrimps. Wasteland remains. Worldwide, an area of around 500,000 hectares in abandoned shrimp farms exists. In India alone, some several thousand hectares. The protection of the existing mangroves and the re-cultivation of destroyed coastal forests in South India is supported by the conservation organizations Deepwave and Omkar. 
Together they started the Mangreen project in 2005. So you have to protect your one place from the cows at least for the next five or six years. Then only the mangroves grow up to the stage where the cows cannot eat. Furthermore, irrigation channels must be regularly cleared of silt, so allowing enough tidal water to reach the plants. The Thanyavur Forestry Department sanctioned the collection of mangrove seeds from the nearby nature reserve Muthupets. Two kinds of mangrove saplings, Abyssinia marina, the grey mangrove, and the Rizophora apiculata, the tall stilted mangrove, are raised from these seeds in the mangreen nurseries. These species differ in their tolerance of salt water. Omkar biologists regularly check their growth, whilst villagers check the seedlings for pests. As the stock of sea fish, the villagers' only income decreases, Mangreen integrates the fishermen in the daily project work. While the men establish new nurseries, prepare the areas to be planted, and finally plant the saplings in the conservation area, the women collect mangrove seeds and prepare their growth. We, we sow some seeds in the heart of the people, you know, to the fishermen, and we ask them to participate in the daily activities of the mangreen project. What we did in the last two months, we have to continuously maintain our activities with the villagers. If we lost, for, if we go out from the villages for two months, it will affect the programs, the total programs we have been carried out for the last two years. Sound educational work is provided by the staff of Omkar and student volunteers to ensure that mangrove protection becomes a long-term policy. As part of the project, the women were taught to produce coir rope and manufacturing was set up in Veliwayal. Uh, we asked the local fisherwoman to, to participate in a, a coir making training program. Coir is nothing but a rope that is made up of coconut fiber. So we trained the woman how to make the rope from the coconut fiber. So after they trained for one month, we also started a small kayak industry. For the first time, the local women could by these means contribute to the family income. The Mangreen project shows that local involvement is very important for mangrove conservation. Long-term improvements in the living conditions of several fishing communities have resulted. Although a worldwide start has been made to recultivate and provide mangrove protection, the unchecked global destruction of this sensitive ecological system is still going on. Mangrove forests are said to be the most endangered forests on Earth. If this steady destruction continues at its current pace, within two decades, mangrove forests will have all but disappeared forever. That is, a situation where there will be no more mangrove forests left on the planet. To prevent this, we urgently need a complete change of awareness and personal commitment. I'm gonna make